Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day. So I took a couple of days to reflect on the disaster that was the DNC chair race, and I will be talking about it more comprehensively on the upcoming episode, which I'm now preparing for. But I just wanted to make a quick video, uh, just kind of getting my thoughts out there and why I think it's the case that progressives keep getting shunned by Democrats and what we can do going forward. Now, this is just my opinion, uh, but I wanted to share it with you guys. So why is it that progressives and Bernie Sanders, we keep getting shunned by the Democratic Party establishment? Is it impossible to penetrate the establishment? Well, no, it's not, but we're obviously finding that it's incredibly difficult to make any uh, change. Now, Here's one thing I really want to talk about, and I touched on this during the actual election, but I really think this is a fundamental point. Why is it that Donald Trump, who is an outsider, was able to successfully run uh, in the Republican Party and he became the Republican president, even though the Republican Party establishment did not like Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump had something that Bernie Sanders and progressives do not have at this point. And this is leverage. So when all of these Republican outsiders started to come out to attack Donald Trump during the Republican primary, what happened? What did Donald Trump do? What was his response? Well, Donald Trump said, you know what? If I think that this race is unfair, I'm going to run as a third party candidate. Now, he ended up winning the primary, so that whole point was moot. But they were terrified at this. They made him sign a pledge. And even after he signed the pledge, he continued to talk about running as a third party candidate. And this is because he knew that if they didn't respect him, he had to do something. He had to have some type of leverage. Now, during the primary, when we knew that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was brazenly trying to sabotage Bernie Sanders' campaign, I urged Bernie Sanders, Bernie, you have to run as a third-party candidate if you feel as though the race is unfair. Now, I don't think Bernie Sanders would ever do this, but my goal was to at least get Bernie Sanders to threaten to run as a third party candidate. Because even if you're not going to do it, if you just get that thought out there in the public and they start thinking about it, they know, whoa, if Bernie Sanders did run as a third party candidate against Hillary Clinton, well, that would be a disaster. We would for sure lose to Donald Trump. Now, the reason why I'm talking about that election is because I think that there's still some importance and some relevance that we need to take into consideration for today. So the reason why the Democratic Party establishment is continuing to shun progressives and basically give us the middle finger is because we have no leverage. Think of the response that we get from uh, Democratic Party insiders and DNC members. When we communicate to the Democratic Party establishment that we're angry that they rigged the primary, that we're angry that they selected a corporatist, Tom Perez, to be the DNC chair, Think of the response. They don't care. They're ambivalent. They, they, you know, they think, well, where the hell are you going to go? Are you going to vote for a Republican? Because, you know, you could try to vote Republican to punish us. That's fine. But, you know, we know the Republican Party is a lot crazier than the Democratic Party is. So regardless of how dissatisfied you are with our party, well, where are you going to go to the Republicans? And then you say, no, you know, we're going to vote green. This is what we did during the election. I voted for Jill Stein. They said, well, if you vote green, that's fine. But a Green Party candidate will never, ever win, and all you're going to do is split votes between progressives and liberals and hand the election to, you know, a Republican. And this is what they, they like to blame Jill Stein, even though it's the case that Jill Stein took less votes from Hillary Clinton than Gary Johnson took from Donald Trump. But, you know, let's not, let's not talk about that fact. But... Basically, the way that they see it is that we're cornered. As progressives, they can do whatever shitty thing they want to us, and we have nowhere to go. So what do we do? What do we? What, what can we possibly do? Is the situation hopeless? Well, no, it's not. Now, I've, I'm going to say the same thing that I've been saying, and anyone who's been watching The Humanist Report knows that this is my stance. We have two goals. First of all, we have to work to reform the Democratic Party internally, and I know that this is such a this is such a non satisfying response. I, I can't even put it into words. It's such a the thought of it sounds gross because the party's rotten to the core. So how do you do this? Well, I think Justice Democrats they have the best strategy, and I've reached out to Kyle. He knows I'm on board with Justice Democrats 100%. I support Justice Democrats because we have to take over the party. That's one strategy, and I'm on board with that. But another strategy is we have to try to affect change externally, and that is with a different party. Now, you know, people are going to automatically say, Mike, 
look up Duverger's law and see how that's going to work out for you. We just we have so many institutional biases that the thought of even trying to operate a third party is pointless because it's always going to go back down to the Democrats and Republicans. And as we saw with the general election, people were so afraid to vote for Jill Stein. I mean, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were the most disliked presidential candidates in American history, yet Jill Stein couldn't even get 5% of the vote. So, I mean, it seems hopeless. But look, this is what I've always maintained. When I vote for a third party candidate, I'm telling the Democratic Party that I do have leverage, that they're not going to get my votes no matter what. So what we have to do is we still have to build up a viable third party candidate um, or third party, just generally speaking. Now, how do we do that? Well, recently, people from Bernie Sanders campaign launched an initiative to draft Bernie to lead a new people's party. Bernie Sanders rejected this idea. I think that's a bad decision on Bernie Sanders' part because the Democratic Party establishment has shown time and again that they will trot out progressives and pay lip service to us and let us kind of be the poster boys for the party and poster girls for the party for someone like Elizabeth Warren. But they don't actually want to embrace the change. So Bernie Sanders, if someone like him were to get behind a third party, be it the Green Party or the People's Party, I don't care if Bernie Sanders, someone who is a huge figure, or even Nina Turner, if they were to get behind a third party, think about what would happen. People would see that party as an actual threat, and they might be inclined to vote uh, for that party. Now, what's more important? The Democratic Party establishment would see that party as a threat. Because is it the case that if Bernie Sanders joined the third party the, and he led the People's Party, would it actually be electorally viable right away? Well, of course not, but that's not the point. The point is that if they see that Bernie Sanders is forming a new party and millions of progressives are lining up behind Bernie Sanders, what do we have now? We have leverage because the Democratic Party establishment can no longer ignore progressives. They can no longer just trot out progressives in front of us. They can't, you know, push Keith Ellison to the front and say, look, we made up this position for him. He's deputy, uh, deputy DNC chair, so obviously we're paying attention. No, they actually have to listen. They actually have to pay attention because if they start losing votes, if they realize that the People's Party that's led by Bernie Sanders is so big that it's going to cost them every single election, they have no choice. Now, currently, we have no leverage. The Democratic Party knows we have no leverage, and the Democratic Party knows this. They know that all they have to do is wait it out. Republicans are doing a really shitty job. Donald Trump is a terrible president. His approval ratings are very, very, very low. So they know that all they have to do is continue being shitty, continue taking corporate money, and just wait it out. And pretty soon we'll be so sick of the Republican Party that everyone will be just obliged to just come out and enthusiastically vote Democrat again, even if they're corporatist, even if they're shitty. And yes, that may happen. I think they're right here. But if that's going to happen, then guess what? We get the same thing again. We get, you know, a new Democratic president for eight years. We get a Democratic Congress for a couple of years. And then, you know, we realize that they're corporatists. Then we get a crazy Republican, maybe a crazier Republican than Donald Trump. So we have to break the cycle right now. We have to form a third party. Bernie Sanders has got to lead this third party. And we need to work on two fronts. One, within, Justice Democrats, reform the party, take over the party. And two, Threaten the party externally. Create competition because competition breeds innovation. They will be forced to respond if there's a gigantic third party threat. Now, I don't care if this People's Party wins zero seats ever. Uh, as long as they're there, as long as the Democratic Party knows that they're a threat, just the fact that there's a threat to begin with gives us leverage and it makes them have to move to the left to compete because right now all they have to do is be less shitty than Republicans and they can still win elections. Now, they're not right now, but I mean, the whole takeaway is that, yes, it is the case that, you know, in, in, in our electoral system, there is something called Duverger's Law. Uh, brilliant, you know, um, sociologist, I believe, who uh, is from France, Maurice Duverger, 
you know, he states that if you have a winner-take-all system, you're always going to get two parties. So what could happen potentially is we reform the Democratic Party with the People's Party because eventually they could be forced to compete and become so far to the left that the People's Party and the Democratic Party could merge one day once we feel as though we can trust the party establishment again and once Justice Democrats just take over the party in general so you can unite the left that way. So that's one way that I think you could change the party. But here's the bottom line is that we need leverage. We have no leverage right now. And I think that the Justice Democrats and uh, the People's Party, they've got to coordinate. So, I mean, if you have a Justice Democrat taking on an incumbent Democrat and that individual wins the primary and is going up against, you know, a Republican, we don't run someone from the People's Party in that district. We allow that progressive to get in because I don't I don't give a shit what party they're from. I don't care if you're independent or not. So long as we get a progressive in, that's a true progressive that's not taking corporate money, I'm fine with that person. But we've got to have some form of leverage, and I want Bernie Sanders to realize that in forming a party, are you making it possible that the Democratic Party will lose some elections because you're going to split some votes if you run People's Party candidates in districts with Democratic Party candidates? Yeah, you will, but you know what? Fuck it. Maybe Democrats have to lose a couple more elections, and guess what? They're going to continue to lose elections until they learn their lesson and be more progressive. So we've got to do this from two different approaches. You have to work with the Justice Democrats. I mean, not even Justice Democrats. I support Justice Democrats because... I think that they're serious about it, and I trust Kyle, and I trust Jenk. I believe in what they're doing, uh, and I love the platform. I trust Justice Democrats. So you have to work to reform the party from within, but reforming it externally is also incredibly important because if you have that external threat, then the Democratic Party, they're going to have to notice us if we start getting enough people to join this party. And I think that you're not really going to get a credible third-party threat unless someone like Bernie Sanders is leading that party. So the effort to draft Bernie to lead a people's party, I'm on board with it. Now, the thing that Bernie Sanders has got to realize is that he's got to be on board with it too. I think Nina Turner could potentially lead a party, but I don't think she has the name recognition at this point that would make it a credible threat. We need the Democratic Party to see that there's a viable third party alternative because we have to scare them. They have to know that they are forced to move back to the left. So, you know, my goal is to continue to push the envelope with Bernie Sanders and, you know, push him and urge him to join and lead a people's party because I think that that's one way that you can get change because currently the Democratic Party establishment, they're not going to change. They're not, there's no way they're going to change. And we have Tom Perez as the DNC chair. If they can't even put someone like Keith Ellison as the chair, who wasn't even that progressive, then you know they're not going to change. They don't want to change. And, you know, they try to tell us, you know, why are, why are progressives freaking out? Because Tom Perez and Keith Ellison, they're so close. They're basically progressives. Well, if that's the case, then why don't you just put up Keith Ellison? And look, we all know that behind the scenes, Obama was pulling str strings to get uh, Tom Perez elected. And I'm sorry, Obama, but under your tenure as president, Democrats were wiped out. Bye. You're done. You're out of politics forever. You're as irrelevant as Hillary Clinton. Bye. We don't want to hear from you anymore. So this is what progressives have to do. And look, if you have any ideas as to how the Democratic Party can get leverage, then I'm, I'm free to listen. But for right now, I think this is really important going forward. They have to know that we are leaving the party and we will vote third party. And here's the thing. You actually really have to do it. You have to vote third party. You have to register as an independent. Because if they just think that, you know, everything that we're yelling about is hot air, then, you know, they're not going to believe us. And right now they don't believe us. We have to have some type of leverage if we ever want to try to reform the Democratic Party until Justice Democrats take over the party. But these are all things that are not going to happen overnight. Justice Democrats taking over the party, you know, having a viable third party threat. This isn't going to happen overnight. We'll be lucky to have justice democrats in the party and we'll be lucky to have a viable third party threat in 10 years so this all takes time so i think we start now and really a good way going forward is to have bernie sanders lead a new party yes there are institutional biases yes that party will probably not win many seats it may not be electorally viable that's not the point the point is to scare democrats the vote the point is to take votes away from democrats so look that's my random thoughts this is jumbled this is incredibly incoherent but <laughs> Hopefully, you guys can understand the gist of what I'm trying to say. Because going forward, you know, I, I was so frustrated over the weekend. It really ruined my weekend 
finding out that Tom Perez was the DNC chair, it, you know, this was kind of like a punch to the gut. And I shouldn't have been that. I wasn't really surprised. It was just like I kind of anticipated that they would make Tom Perez the DNC chair. But then I thought there's no way they can't do this. It'd be it'd be so stupid. There's there's no way they can do it. But they did. And this is because we have no leverage and they don't care. They think that they will have us no matter how much they use and abuse us. We have to draw a line in the sand. We have to finally tell the party we leave if they do not cater to progressives. We start our own party. That's my thoughts, guys. You know, you can disagree with it, but I think that whatever we can do to be proactive at this point, we have to do it quickly. Because, yes, Donald Trump, he is a disaster. And currently, Donald Trump and the Republicans are in control of all branches of government, and there's no effective opposition. We have a Democratic Party establishment that are siding with Trump, and they're approving his nominees, and then they're complaining that we are yelling about them approving Donald Trump's nominees. You guys are the ones that fear mongered about Donald Trump forever. And look, I'm about to go on like so many different tangents. As you, you know, if you couldn't tell, I have so much on my mind. So yeah, I'm preparing for this episode coming up, and I will talk about the DNC chair race. Yes, the news will be a little bit late, but hopefully you guys can appreciate the analysis and you know the the perspective that I bring. So look, I hope you guys have a great day, and just know that we are all into in, in this together as progressives. We're gonna fight, and we're going to do what we can to live in a just progressive society you know uh so we're just gonna keep moving we're not gonna give up support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com